Okay, hello. My name is Yudhi Musha. I work for Reddit, mainly in the Earth area. I was asking this state of the tracers bar for Earth. Basically, we have two maintainers. Peter Vashka is the current part maintainer, and Arnaldo Carvalho Melo, which is uh, the virtual maintainer. Neither of them of them could be here, so I'm here today. When I asked them what's new, what's the state of the perf, they said we are doing fine. <laughs> so crazy time. That's it. You can see this is last couple of releases uh, statistics uh, in the terms of how many changes went into each uh, release and how many files were changed. So it's pretty much busy part of the of the tree. It's changing uh, really quickly. In the so which time time uh, time frame is this from quarter nine to quarter thirteen? Uh, Over you mean days? Days or how many times? How many months? Yes. Actually, I'm not sure. I would think it's like seventy days per release. I don't know. Something like this. Two months. Three. Uh, we want your uh, the microphone well. Not really. Not really. Oh, is it up here? Yeah, the Take off your lanyard too, otherwise it's going to make noise. Better. Better. Uh, yeah, I think it's like the regular release, Steam and Mind mode. There's one. In. Then we will speak about the features. I'm more involved in the perf tool area. It somehow reflects the kernel space. However, the kernel space updates are mostly for whenever the new CPU comes. There's a new support book for the perf uh, to make new, new events uh, alive. And for the perf tool changes, basically those are the most recent biggest changes that that we have. I will go by one by one, introduce them. The vendor events and vendor metrics, uh, basically for each CPU, there's a set of events uh, which are specific uh, for a given model. And it was very hard uh, to now to actually uh, touch them because you needed to know the specific output. Uh, right now we have like this uh, JSON list uh, compiled directly to Perf. So if you run Perf list, you will see hundreds of hardware events which are now easily accessible because of this. Uh, together with the vendor events, uh, some vendor like Intel also provides metrics. So computations and ratios based on uh, those, their specific events. So this is now accessible under perf very easily as well. And it's, as far as I know, very well documented. There was the in integration of the Intel uh, processor trace. Uh, it's more or less, uh, more or less done, I think it's, it's uh, working. Uh, you can use perf to profile uh, Java JIT code now, uh, which is uh, very useful. We have ongoing uh, eBPF integrations and fixes. Basically, you can use perf to load the eBPF code into the kernel. I'm not sure about how the documentation looks like, but I've seen some blogs about this. We have some SVT uh, support, which is uh, sort of the user space D-trace like trace points, support. Uh, not sure basically what we support there, but perfect uh, displays available trace points uh, to the user that much, I know. I can say about that. Uh, based on your pro uh, to support that, it does support the cases where the applications are instrumented with the SDT points, but without uh, the actual uh, enable uh, checks. Uh, that uh, SBT provides. So, yeah. thank you. 
the next one is SMI uh, measurement. Uh, basically, those are the. Uh, I forgot what the acronym stands for, but Stephen. System uh, management interrupt. System management interrupt. Yeah, so Perf now uh, provides, Perf stuff now provides night option just to measure them. It's very easy and well documented as well. We provide displaying the inline frames in the cool stack, so whenever there's like inline functions, we now you will see them as well in the cool stack for, for any events with the cool stack. Uh, tool sleep code sharing. Uh, basically, what happens now is that we are trying to move a lot of Perf code to the generic area. So, under the tool sleep, uh, there's more and more code now, basically, uh, to be able to share it among other applications. We have many automated tests which are getting bigger and bigger and also recently we are getting many more fixes from other architectures than x86 which is which is nice from recent development we are actually moving to multi-threading for record and report basically there's a need if you have uh, many cpu servers uh, currently, when we uh, record the data from the kernel, there's just one thread, and when you monitor system-wide, it's just not enough, and you are losing events, so we are trying to, uh, to fix that. And for the report uh, side, uh, if you have really very big data, it can be really painful to wait several minutes to display it. As I said, basically we have many fixes, uh, but we have better integration. Arnold is now running many Docker uh, environments. He has my installation for many distribution in many versions of the distributions. And whenever he's uh, before he's pushing the patches upstream, he's running those tests. So we are sure that we actually can compile and. Uh, run basic tests on many, many distributions and even older, older versions. As for the applications, there have been quite few new applications like Perf C2C, uh, which is to detect the false sharing. Uh, that's quite useful. We have a new application to uh, manage the Perf uh, configuration file. We have now RPF trace, which kind of mimics the trace command. So, just another way to uh, to actually set up the F trace. Uh, there will be many fixes for RPF trace, which actually is like lightweight S trace, S trace tool. And many fixes went to RPF stuff. And and other like perf report and uh, perf get and perf annotate. With the annotation, <coughs> it's the view when you see lines of the code, uh, like source line mixed with the instructions. There have been there have been uh, many development that you actually see. It helps you navigate uh, through the instructions. We are having now nice arrow, uh, arrows arrows uh, for the jumps. So, basically, looking better. That's it. You want to start with questions on this or this issue? This issue. There are because. Or we can take them later as well during the discussion. So you can do this part. <coughs> All right. Did you want? Okay, you said to set up slides. Uh, sure, but that's for the discussion. Oh, okay, it's the discussion. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, so I'm going to plant it in the screen. And then Stephen can do a trace. Okay. I don't need to plug it in, but I'm just going to use this as my thumbs. Yeah, I'm just looking at the stuff I did yesterday. He's going to do LTG. So, so I'll do LTG right oh, away okay. because okay. my laptop is already plugged in. Oh, yeah, I actually need to plug it in. That's pretty good. So here's a state of the tracer update for LTG. 
so the new features that appeared in LTT and G210, which we released on uh, August 1st, 2017, uh, the release name is Kiklik, which is a Quebec uh, beer, uh, inspired uh, from uh, uh, Belgian uh, spontaneous uh, fermentation beers. Um, so we added support for multiple wildcards. Uh, so basically, you can now put, uh, so rather than just having uh, the event name or a string that you want to match, and uh, so there was a limitation in LTTNG, both the kernel and user space racer, that you could just put a wildcard, a star, at the end of either the string or the event name. So we have uh, removed that limitation. So you can now put an arbitrary number of star, star in your event or um, uh, string uh, match. Um, anywhere in the industry. We added the trigger and notification APIs. Uh, so the current use that is implemented there is to uh, monitor uh, buffer usage conditions. <clears throat> so that, uh, for instance, uh, if there are scenarios where uh, on a live system, some operator enables too much tracing, uh, that can be used to basically um, uh, notice that the system is used more than a certain amount that should be dedicated to uh, to tracing, and basically, so it can decide to stop tracing, for instance, and report that uh, to the operator. Uh, so we have added uh, an option. So, so in the previous versions, uh, we we have done a change in terms of documentation. So the dash dash hell would uh, just launch man and would show man pages rather than duplicating uh, documentation in the executables and adding man pages. However, we have received uh, feedback uh, from the embedded world uh, where they basically don't even have MAN on their system. So we have added a configure option where you can embed the MAN page, uh, and this is done at build time. So it's actually building the MAN pages and integrating them with the executables. So best of both worlds. Um, so we have added, and this is a big feature, uh, the LTTNG UST blocking mode. So uh, it came from feedback from uh, GLIPC guys who wanted to do uh, memory uh, alloc and free uh, uh, memory allocator tracing. And this happens to uh, generate a very high throughput of events on non-trivial systems. And uh, basically, uh, with LTTNG US, even if, if they made the buffers very large, they would always discard events. So this blocking mode uh, can be enabled optionally. Uh, on a per channel basis, and you have to pass an environment variable to your application to actually allow blocking mode for that application and its children. And uh, on buffer full, the application will uh, block up to a uh, specified uh, timeout, or it can block indefinitely until uh, there's space. So it's going to retry writing the events. So this is uh, very useful for uh, tracing simulations, uh, emulators. Uh, uh, so, so very, very high, high throughput tracing where you can afford to block the application and change its behavior to uh, allow uh, the trace uh, trace I/O to cope with the amount of data. Uh, we added support for LTTNG modules uh, for for uh, the kernel 410, 411, 412, uh, yeah, 410 to 413 actually, um, and we'll backport support for 414 as soon as uh, the final version comes out. Um, and uh, so we also added the extended socket pair uh, system called tracing data. So we could actually trace and know which file descriptors are being uh, returned by a socket pair. Uh, so rather than a pointer, it's actually much more useful. Um, upcoming in 2.11, uh, one uh, feature that we're adding is a trace bandwidth monitoring. Uh, so this, uh, this will Hello, uh, basically monitoring the bandwidth used by the tracer. Uh, so the, the prior one was really buffer usage condition. So how much in percentage my in-memory buffer is currently being filled? Uh, the other one, trace bandwidth, so uh, that could be useful, let's say, in snapshot mode, where you're in flight recorder and you want to monitor how much of the memory bandwidth you're using for tracing and apply limits based on that. Uh, to, uh, so you're, you're not trashing your memory throughput, for instance. Um, so we plan to, uh, uh, to merge uh, uProbe instrumentation from the kernel tracer to basically allow working on specific functions as well uh, as SDT probes. Uh, so, uh, so the code is ready, we just have to merge that. Uh, <coughs> we're adding as well, and yeah, that's a big one, so session rotation. So, 
for use cases where you want to do compression, encryption of traces, or using an external message passing infrastructure from, for your cloud, and you'd like to do that uh, to transport your trace data over that. So uh, we, we evaluated a couple of uh, approaches, uh, including uh, kind of integrating with the relay daemon, with the live mode, and everything. Uh, but we decided to go with a different approach. So this is inspired from a very simple concept, uh, log rotation. So uh, whenever log rotation is basically uh, being invoked, it's going to uh, rotate your log. Right? You have the old log, and then the new one, and then you, you move up. So we applied that same concept to the trace. So what we do is, whenever a trace rotation or a trace session rotation is invoked, we basically keep the, the, the trace that has been generated so far is put in a subdirectory, and we continue tracing into another directory. So let's say that you do a session rotation every 30 seconds. So you'll end up with some folders of traces that are 30 seconds uh, long each. So you can. So, so the nice thing is uh, we provide warranties that after the rotation has completed, the color can be notified. So you can already start running an analysis on a 30 second chunk as the next one is being written. So it's not live per se. This is more kind of batch mode analysis. You can pipeline your analysis with your trace collection. Uh, and the nice thing about it is it's not only an analysis. You can do, for instance, compression. So after the rotation, uh, you could say, okay, this folder I want to do a tarball and compress it, and then uh, use SCP to send it to a remote machine, because you have really you're the only one having access to it, because the tracer is not writing to it anymore, even though it's it's still tracing in a different subdirectory. So so that will enable many many use cases. Um, so uh, so for the next one, stack dumps from kernel tracer. Uh, dumping user space and kernel. Uh, we have the code, uh, we need people to uh, test it out, uh, and I'll have to uh, review uh, again the patch set and the, uh, how much testing we have in place uh, that will really be handled by our CI uh, before I make a decision to merge uh, that stack down facility. Code wise, it looks good, but I want the right coverage. Uh, we are uh, also adding, uh, so we are extending the filtering uh, machinery of LTTNG, both the user and kernel tracer. So uh, you'll be able to specify, uh, so if you have an array or a sequence of, of integers, so those could be bytes. Uh, so let's say you have a network packet that you would trace as payload uh, or a header. Uh, so you'll be able to, you, to, to index uh, those arrays and sequence. And so, so, so what that enables is you could say, okay, those few bytes at the beginning of my packet, I know those are uh, a specific header, and I want to match that header so that it's only tracing uh, uh, the packets that have those values. So you can actually do uh, packet filtering in this case, or, or header type filtering with this. And even then, if it's more specific and you want to filter on specific bits in your header, uh, let's say IPv4 having specific bits uh, for flags. So we're, uh, we've added uh, bitwise operators, uh, and or and or, uh, not and the shift left, shift right. So you can actually use those in the filter interpreter uh, to, uh, to filter on specific masks as well. So that's, uh, that's what we have. Uh, so we've also worked a lot on uh, the CI infrastructure. Uh, so in addition to having uh, coverage, uh, build coverage for uh, LTTNG module uh, from kernels to 2.6.36 up to now for every stable kernel release, and Ubuntu as well as Red Hat uh, kernels. Uh, so we've added a, a, a CI benchmarking and runtime testing of the kernel tracer, which we were missing in CI. Uh, and I mean, we've had all the user space uh, CI coverage for a long time. So uh, yeah, we worked a lot on that as well. Any questions? Uh, please take a look. Uh, how do you do that CI on multiple kernels? Do you spin up uh, hundreds of virtual machines for every uh, kind of fiber and, and so on? <clears throat> so uh, there are a few parts to the CI. So building, we do that on worker machines, which are basically uh, via XCD664 VMs. For the runtime part, so we have uh, 
So we do that on multiple architectures. On x86, we do that in VMs. On ARM32 and 64, we have installed <coughs> boards in our test setup uh, to do that. Uh, we also have a PowerPC32 machine. Uh, we have PowerPC64 VM, uh, which is, uh, uh, so we have an account at uh, some university that nicely provided that uh, to us. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, so for the VMs, we basically provision a new VM for kernel te testing every time. For user space testing, it's, I mean, much less chances that this will be destructive. We, we reuse the VMs to run uh, the various tests. And uh, yeah, so for possibly destructive testing, we provision a new VM, we do everything. Uh, if uh, it's on the bare metal hardware, uh, we actually boot that hardware and provision it for each and every single test run. Other questions? For the uh, user space uh, stack down from kernel, um, what kind of technique are you using? Are you just uh, copying APKs from the stack like <coughs> others are doing? Or do you, do you need frame pointers? Or are you doing intelligent uh, uh, frame walking using bar information? Or? We currently need frame pointers. Um, yeah, otherwise we don't walk the stack if it makes no sense. Uh, so uh, it, it, it would be interesting to add as a general kernel infrastructure uh, some, some efficient ways to do stack walking when the frame pointers are not available. Uh, available. Uh, I have discussed some ideas uh, with the other kernel developers in the past years, but we're not there yet. Uh, and I, and I don't do uh, 8K dump of, of, of uh, stack uh, as uh, Perk is doing because, I mean, for, for tracing, uh, when you have uh, even moderate amount of trace data uh, being traced, uh, saving 8K worth of, of stack in your trace buffers is really just getting performance. It does make sense in a sampling use case, but not for tracing. There are questions? Um, yeah, I keep doing this on every place, I might as well leave it to it here. Reminds me of all the places I got on stage, I have too many things. Well, I have one. There you go. Um, I just, uh, post, someone posted this on Facebook, I thought that was kind of cool, I guess in Ireland or somewhere, uh, Iceland, that they uh, have been painting 3D uh, crosswalks to slow cars down. I figured that's just my like uh, way to slow myself down from talking. Plus, of course, perspective taking. Yep. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Driving up, you see these pillars at you. Ah! Uh, just, uh, I wasn't planning on using slides, but since I was like, what the hell? But just remind, as I use the slides, just to remind me what I'm doing. But since he says when we talk, and say, I'll write the slide. I'll just take the slides from my last talk and bring it here. Uh, real quick overview: the state of F-trace uh, since 318. Uh, at, in 4.0, we added dynamic trampolines that allows. Uh, function tracing to be much faster. This helped out uh, live kernel patching and everyone else that wants to hook into uh, function tracing that if you're the only user of a certain function that you get your own trampoline that uh, you have multiple users of different function functions. You don't have to iterate for every single user to find out if you know, uh, demultiplex. So demultiplex, if you're a single user of a single function, you call that guy goes directly to the function that's attached to it. Before it used to be was if you had two uh, registered uh, two, like LTT and Junior F trace, both register to trace any function. Even though they're not tracing the same functions, they used to iterate through every one around. That's been sped up quite a bit. Uh, new trace of S uh, file system is out there. Uh, by the way, these are basically just copies of slides that I gave in the talk on Wednesday. So if you can grab down all those, that, those slides which are uploaded, these, this is just a subset of it. Uh, Trace of S file system is now created in slash sys slash curl slash tracing, so you don't need to mount debug FS. In fact, you don't even need to configure debug FS if you want tracing. This is good for both ftrace and perf, since both ftrace and perf uses the event uh, format files to determine how to read the binary data of trace events within the kernel. Uh, we've added new clocks. One of them is in, in 4.4, we added the mono raw clock. Uh, this isn't affected by NTP, or it could be used, I believe this was the one that could be used between, uh, 
Oh, this is, it's just basically, yeah, it's a consistent clock that what people want to do is have a single clock that didn't get affected by uh, the CPU cycles and such like that. So if the CPU slows down or whatever, you don't see, oh, this was, this was faster now. This is slower now. I actually wanted real clocks that wasn't affected by any drift by anything else. So it's, just, it's a monotone clock, but um, it stays consistent throughout. Yes. Is it resilient against the... Is it resilient against uh, VM, uh, CPU text uh, being stolen by, by VM hypervisor? Uh, I don't know about uh, the hypervisor. I don't know if you're being the guest. Uh, I haven't looked at that. I think this more, was written for more bare metal, but I don't know. I haven't tried it. Someone else wrote this code. I'm just looking at what changed among uh, So I went through a Git history and picked out things that were user visible. A lot changed from inside, I had a lot more optimizations, a lot of fixes from inside, but I don't think that anyone here cares about it. I care about it. Performance got better, things got more stable, code is cleaner, but you don't care about this. I do. Uh, uh, tracing thresh uh, is a way to um, that affects function profiling, so if you use a function profiler, some people do, it's not that many, there's other tools to do function profiling, but uh, function graph profiling is so it's always there. You don't have to download any other tools. You just go into the tracing trace of best directory and just enable profiling. And if function graph tracer, tracer is enabled in your kernel, it will use that, and you can see the times of all the functions. Uh, they're exaggerated because function graph tracing has a high overhead itself, so it will uh, skew the, the time. So take what you read from you know, the grain of salt. Just gives you an idea of where things might be a problem. Uh, Sked Wakey, I think, uh, Matthew, you're you kind of push this to, or oh, your name was attached to that one or something? It's kind of waking trace point where before you had a straight, well, maybe well, someone was. was like, we have some patch in the pipeline, but I'm not, I don't remember if some got it. Oh, trace, trace, it's to get waking got in at 4.4. Um, so what? Oh, yeah, that's me. Yes, 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 that was you. And your name was attached to it. Yeah. So it's get waking a trace point. What that is, is it's actually when something goes, hey, wake up this task where the, the scan wake up trace point actually is when it actually does get woken up. Because there's actually, there's times where it's a cold path, and the reason why is because trying to wake up task has been modified so that you could say, you could defer a wake up. So, like if you're in an interrupt contest, you don't want to grab run, run queue locks and say, okay, wake up this guy because I need to grab run queue locks, you know, defer it to an IRQ handle or whatever. Well, that's not really, uh, encompassing the wake up latency. Wake up latency is when you really wanted that guy to wake up to when it actually has. So the wake up trace point is usually when it actually goes from running, when the state changes to running. Uh, or no, I think that's the opposite. Well, it's just when it actually gets woke up, wake up process is where it is, like the wake up of the process. But what we're care about is when we really set it to running. And that is done, um, that can be done a lot earlier than it actually gets put on the run queue. So we're more interested, the wake up task is when it gets put onto the run queue to the time it schedules in. The scheduled waking means this is the time, that's a trace point that you could hook to and say this is actually when it actually was woken up. And that's the one that you actually really care more about. Um, I able to, the LS options, another visible thing that you'll see. Uh, before 4.4, if you did LS options, you see all the options of the global, you see all global options. and. To see a tracer option, you have to actually enable the tracer before you see it. Uh, today, you see all options, all the tracer options. So any tracer option or any tracer that has uh, been compiled into the kernel, you see its options right there, which is nice because uh, the func stack trace uh, function tracer, which does a stack dump at every single function, could be very dangerous to enable if you don't have filtering on. And sometimes I'll enable it and then I'll do it, turn off tracing and forget and then clear the filter and then forget that that bit is set and then enable function tracing and my machine slows down to a Commodore, a Commodore 64. A <laughs> uh, little more features and how to, uh, how to enable uh, modules, uh, filtering on modules. With this, whenever you put a colon mod colon into um, the set ftrace filter, it specifically, you're telling it, I, I want to trace this module or these functions from this module and ignore everything else. So uh, there's just more filtering options happen. So if I say, you know, I put star colon mod colon ext4, that's telling ftrace to say, hey, I only want to trace, I want to enable all functions, I only want to trace functions in the ext4 module. So any module you have, you can filter just on those modules when you set your ftrace filter. 
Uh, set of that PID was added to 4.4, which is a way they could add a PID, and, and then that would automatically make all your filters um, for tracing of uh, events will only happen, or the, the events will only be traced if the PID is within that file. So once you add a PID, a number to that file, the set event PID, all um, events are now filtered within that level. I mean, if you make another instance, it's a, uh, a Buffer instance, I don't know if you guys are familiar with instances in F-Trace, it's a way to make a separate buffer that's not affected by the top buffer. Uh, so each instance has its own set event PID. Uh, you could say, I only want to trace this, this process, and in the old way you actually had it set to filter. The event fork option, um, this is where if you, could, if you add something to the PID, uh, you can set this option, which is in that option file, and any that any task with a PID that's listed in the set event PID file when it forks, its child will be added to that file. And also, when that process exits, its PID will be removed. Uh, without this bit set, it's static whether the PID a task is, a PID has I'm sorry a task has that PID or if it doesn't. But if you have this bit set, if a task exits with the PID, it's removed from the file. Uh, 4.9 also introduced uh, Tom Sanusi, who from Intel, uh, has added some histogram work. Uh, this is really nice. You can actually attach, uh, if you just care about histograms, how many, how many times something was hit, and you can actually place a field and record the field as values on this. For example, the one I just showed here is, okay, I want to break up, I want, I'm interested in a PID and the blanks requested. So for uh, process with the BID 803, and by the way, you can see the comps as well, I didn't use that as my example. Uh, process with 803, you'll see it has, you know, it was, it requested eight bytes once, and requested, actually, eight, it requested eight bytes seven times, and allocated 56 bytes, uh, and then you can see it requested 32, requested blah, 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 blah. Uh, the bytes requested and bytes allocated are two fields in allocation. Uh, reason why you have two fields is you can request so much bytes or request so much um, memory, but the way the slab and everything's format, it actually might give you more memory. I think Malik works that way in the user space as well. So it actually shows you how much is requested and actually how much did uh, memory did the actual kernel give you. And you can actually do a little histogram and see you know, who's doing Malik the most and all that. Um, in 4.14, which hasn't been released yet, in the RCs, but this is all the code that's in there. Uh, we have uh, better glob matching. Uh, the old way, uh, what there's only basically three, maybe four. Well, I guess there's four things you could do when you set a filter. Either set any of the filters on the events, or set any of the filters on uh, function tracing. It had a very uh, primitive glob matching. You could say, "Hey, I want schedule." So it could be direct match. Or you could say, I want everything that starts with sked. So sked star, that gives you everything. Or you could say, I want everything that ends with lock, star lock. That gives you uh, a lock. Or you could say, star, sked star, everything that contains the letter sked. Today, you can now put the star in between. So something that starts with something, something that ends with something. So like I have from here, sked star group. Uh, there's the uh, question mark glob, which is just a character. So here, I don't care if it's vmalloc or kmalloc, I want both, I can do it in one line. And, but what's really nice is the fact that we also allow brackets now. And you can do, because some syscalls, will, you need to trace them with either SYS or capital S, little y, capital S. The reason why is because of uh, the, what to handle 32-bit and 64-bit um, uh, user space for 64-bit kernel. Uh, it adds a special handler that makes sure sign, ex the sign extends all the uh, uh, arguments correctly. And in the code, in, there, in KL Sims, if you look at KL Sims, you'll see that every syscall has two names attached to it. Either capital S, little y, capital S, underscore, read, or you'll see SYS, read, all lowercase. And it's a crapshoot on which one uh, F-trace will use because the look, it's dependent on the KLSIMS lookup. 
And if the chaos and lookup returns the lowercase one, it will use the lowercase one, or it will use the uppercase one, or it will use the uppercase one. So it's always been a pain. Now you actually can ignore, just say, give me all syscalls, and by just doing this way, instead of doing a search of which ones did ftrace get by looking at the available filters function, right? the available function filter. Uh, there's now also a trace marker raw that uh, they pull up asked, which if you want to write binary data from user space into uh, the ring buffer, you can just write binary blob uh, like a structure. So instead of having to write out a string and write it in, this way you write a binary blob and, you, and then you can tell the trace command or have something that uses the trace command libraries read that binary plot, but it's up to you to know Indianness and everything else that's it. Offsets, Indianness, and everything else. If you're, a lot of people do this on the same machine, so they don't care. And actually, the people who uh, asked for this feature, they said, I don't care, it's, uh, I will handle Indianness and all that. I just want, it's a lot faster if I just write a data structure instead of having to write a string. Uh, a new boot clock uh, was done, which might be more like what you did. This boot clock actually keeps time across the spend and resume. So you can see how long uh, the people were doing this for, I guess, the, this was a feature asked by the uh, people who maintain suspended music. Uh, you can use com to, uh, as a string now, it's just eh, it's something that should have been done in the first place. It's, it's kind of a bug fix, but I added it there. Uh, the hardware latency detector uh, is officially in the kernel as well. And uh, it, what it does, it goes into a tight span of loop and it checks for spaces, uh, there's huge spaces, or not spaces, but gaps in time. Uh, you'll see millisecond times here, everything is in uh, microseconds. I ran this on a virtual machine, so yeah, we're going to see huge gaps. I purposely did that because I wanted to force to that, see if we could detect that's huge time happening. But yeah, I ran this on a virtual machine, and yeah, you can see a lot of uh, big outliers. Uh, I just echo it in there, it's in there, all the documentation's in the kernel, so if you want to know more about it, look it up. Uh, function fork has been the set. It does the exact same thing. There's a F set F trace PID that's been there forever. That's like the set event PID that when you set it, all function tracing is uh, uh, will only be only the functions with the, or only the tasks with the PID and set F trace PID will be traced. And now you can set function fork bit, and it does the same thing. Where if it forks, its children will be added, and when it exits, it, the PID will be removed. I actually had the code written at the same time with the other one. And I was going to let it, I was going to let the code, the event fork, uh, go first. And then if that worked okay, I was going to set it in at the next release. But I forgot about it. And uh, Mayhem Kim said, hey Steve, I noticed you have all the functionality for function fork, but it's not enabled. And he sent a patch, so it was like a very small patch to enable it. I'm like, oh, thank you, I, I just completely forgot about that. Um, you can now, in 4.14, you can now actually load uh, you can say, I want to trace functions within a module that's not loaded yet. So you can say colon mod colon KVM and then uh, echo it to set trace filter. And you can look at it, you'll see it's there. But then if you do a mod probe, oh, uh, here I, I use the sound one. And if you do a mod probe of it, then it will add, it will enable the functions of that module on load uh, before it actually, uh, before it runs. So any function that's called during the boot up that's not marked as an it will be traced. Uh, what's coming? Uh, more advanced features and histograms. Tom Sanusi has a whole code or a whole list of things that could be that you could actually make histograms depend on each other. So now you could actually do wake wake, wake up latencies. So you could put a mark or you could set up a histogram on a sked waking and sked uh, sked switch, and then actually do a histogram of a task of all the different wake-ups it has, and it'll just do the counts. It does it uh, automatically. Uh, it will use the synthetic events, variables, I'm not gonna go into detail, that's a full talk itself. Uh, but that's coming. It would have been in uh, 4.15, but there's a little problem I have with the modification he did to the ring buffer, and he's fixing that. So once that's in, I expect it to get into 4.16. So that code's been almost done. It's just a little tweaks that need to be done. I'm, what I would like to have is like preempt, enable, disable events that are detached from the locked up. Uh, so you don't need to compile full locked up to be able to trace, you know, IRQ's on, IRQ's off, preempt, enable, preempt, disable. I want that to happen. We might, we're looking at maybe using alternatives to enable tracing. Uh, I want to trace module init. You can trace core kernel init functions, but module init is a little bit more complex. Uh, I have code that does this, 
And I think it might go into 415. I, I, I think I put up to, yeah, I think it'll be in 415. I'll have it. I think I actually pushed up the code a bit. Um, we're working on better interleaving between um, virtual uh, virtual guests and hosts. We'll be able to trace everyone together. Or we'll have all tracing so you can see the event traces of both guests and hosts interleaved. Uh, one thing, like I said, I'd like to have zero overhead of IRQ preemptive able to disable. Uh, Zero red block events and more interaction between EPPF and FTrace. Uh, this is something that's going to be in the discussion. And we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be a lot more uh, uh, infrastructure built on top of functions, the function tracer to be able to get arguments and function graph tracer to get return values and even build like trace events on top of the function tracing, probably using k probe the k probe infrastructure, since k probe already does it. When you attach a k probe right on top of the function tracing no-op, it uses, it does a direct jump, and it doesn't do the use interrupts. It doesn't use like a break points at all. Uh, we're looking at converting trace side data, hopefully to CTF. Uh, one question, that, one thing we caught this when someone asked me, you know, F trace on kind of oops is great, but could I convert that into a trace.dat file? So one thing we might be looking at doing is maybe spinning up like a UU encoded raw data of the trace files and then be able to just parse that from their logs and actually create a binary file that can be brought up in all sorts of, you know, we run kernel shark and everything on it. I'm also looking at breaking the perf ring buffer out of perf. Right now, it's very coupled with the perf infrastructure. I rather, I mean, what perf has is a really nice memory map uh, buffer that uh, talks to talks to what's it called the uh, um, the kernel to the uh, from between the kernel and user space. Just memory maps that, and it's really nice ring buffer for memory map live streaming. It's I think it's a little bit better than uh, aftrace uh, ring buffer with the uh, sending patches through splice. That's great from taking it from the kernel ring buffer to you know keeping it either through the network or the hard drive. But if you want to where the end result ends up in user space, yeah, you just basically throw it away, either for profiling or whatever. A memmap is uh, zero copy is the is the only basically zero copy way of doing that. So perf has a really nice utility in doing that, but right now it's very, very tied coupled with perf. I want to break that out so anyone can use the perfect infrastructure. That's one of my to-do list. Oops. Ah. I think that's about it. Any questions? Did I talk so fast that you didn't hear any word I said? <laughs> <laughs> what? Questions? Good. That means I said everything you wanted to hear. Well, I do not. Oh, damn it. <laughs> um, so uh, we're meant to be seen, but the, so the perf ring buffer uh, in terms of performance. Uh, last time I checked, it was uh, quite slower than that ring ring buffer. Uh, so do you aim at making it faster as well? I mean, if you, but actually, it's funny because uh, things. Have, when's the last time you checked? Because there has been work on it that has sped it up quite a bit, um, and I could we could look at yes, if there's things I can find that fix it without breaking. The compatibility between user space and uh, uh, kernel, then I'll work on fixing this. But right now, I just want a fast ring buffer between user space and uh, kernel that I don't care about saving events. Just want to read a stream, a live stream, and not save anything. Just recording numbers and histograms or whatnot. Yeah. So, so I'll let you do the updated benchmarking stuff. Sure. Uh, if you notice that uh, there are some, I mean, there might be ways to improve it and everything. Uh, just know that uh, LTTNG does have a ring buffer that's, that fits F trace use cases and can be either splice or a map mode. Provides both. Sure, but right now there's one ring buffer in the kernel and to add yeah, another ring, there's two ring buffers in the kernel and you have to add another third one, that's what we're about. That's why I'm using it. I, I was thinking of just, hey, I can make F trace do this this way. Like, no, Perf already has it in the kernel. Yeah, because maybe when we make it, so maybe you can use it. Yeah, make, make sure to benchmark it first. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. You, you said your slide. Yeah. You mentioned you posted the slides from yesterday. Where did you? Or Wednesday. I sent an email to uh, Linux Foundation, and they said they put it. In fact, actually, I downloaded it from. Um, I did not download it once. Uh, they, it should be underneath my talk. If you go to okay. my talk, uh, it has the full. This is just a subset of those slides. So everything that's on this, I just. When he said. 
um, oh, I'll do, I'm going to do mine instead. I, brought, I took up the slides and just deleted everything that I didn't want to talk about. So this is really exhausting. I just wanted to double check right away. Thanks. Yeah, the only thing I changed here is the front. Okay, other questions? Thank you. Thanks.